also stick around the channel if you do enjoy this video because i have quite a few more coming out just like this and watch the video to the end please don't be that person after 100% a new Super Mario Bros. U, I've decided to state my favorite and least favorite levels in each of the worlds. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section down below. Gameplay, enjoyability, and the practicality of the level and theme will be taken into consideration. Let's begin. Acorn Plains. The first world in the game. Of course, because this is the first world, it is traditionally bland. I mean, the world is an outlet for beginners and the new flying squirrel item. My least favorite level in the world is Mushroom Heights. Mushroom Heights is off theme from the rest of the world. I'm not a fan of the dancing mushroom platforms. It was meant to introduce Baby Yoshi, but if you look past that, there is absolutely nothing special about this level. On the contrary, my favorite level is Lemmy's Swingback Castle. The swimming platforms over the lava feature is good in many ways. It gives beginners a sense of urgency. The star coins aren't very clear, which is a good thing. However, if you want them, you'll find them. It also pays homage to the original Castle Star Coin locations. Each part was designed for something, whether it was for their red ring coins or to secure a Star Coin pipe. Of course, Lemmy's boss fight would have been better over ice, but that's about it. Moving on to Layer Cake Desert. Although there is more ice cream than layer cake in this world, it still holds up some surprisingly good levels. Some might disagree, but I think that this lineup of levels made for a pretty solid world. However, my least favorite level in the world is Blooming Fuck- I mean Lakitu's. Named after the fact that Lakitu shells create piranha plants, I mean, I was never a big fan of Lakitu's or his dumbass levels. And of course, if you have a Lakitu level, the level design is going to revolve around him, and how effective his shells will be when thrown at you. I mean, in this case, it was very effective. However, this almost tied with Fire Snake Cavern. Let me know which level you dislike or like more. On that note, my favorite level was Dry Desert Mushrooms. I mean, this is how you do an off-theme level. Unlike Acorn Plain Sky theme level, this one uses its level design more effectively. From the expansion and contraction of the platforms, the desert spikies, and the track platform at the end, they knocked it out of the park with this one. This level almost tied with Spike Spouting Sands to be my favorite. Although, with this level, it makes you feel as though you're on a journey. Moving on to Sparkling Waters. Since this is an underwater themed world, it is bound to not be good. However, my problem with this world is with the above ground levels. I mean, I think it's agreed that the above ground levels could have been way better. The best part of this world is the aesthetics. My least favorite level was Dragonelle's Undersea Grotto. I actually don't recommend you go down there. But since you have to, I'll explain why. Trying to get through a stiff underwater level while Dragonelle is on your ass is a very painful experience. And if you went for the coins like I did, it'll be a miracle if you get them all on the first try, like I did. Moving on to my favorite level, the Haunted Shipwreck. I liked Haunted Shipwreck because not only was it a different kind of water level, it was also a different kind of ghost theme level. Nintendo took the idea of a sunken ship and made it work in a Mario game. You have the ghosts or the spirits of the dead from the shipwreck, if you're a little dark like myself. You have the platforms of the ship and the water, which is halfway down the level, which you will inevitably have to take on. The ghost rings, fake blocks, bonefish, and fake walls, it all, I mean, it all makes for a great level. Moving on to the next world, Frosted Glacier. And I know it's sad that it's the next world given that it was World 3 in the original Mario Bros. But hey, there were few bad levels in this world. They did an excellent job with this Frosted Glacier thing. I mean, they definitely did a better job than I did trying to mix snow theme in my level design, Mario Maker 2. But we, we, won't, we won't get into that. Almost every level was fun and enjoyable with the exception of Spinning Star Sky. Was it a good intro level for the world? Yeah, but that's really the only thing I can credit it for. Having to attempt to not fall off these damn spinning star platforms was a fucking nightmare. Especially when you're playing in 2020 and you can feel the input delay on your Wii U Pro Controller. I mean, if you're playing on the Switch, that's another thing, but I'm not blowing another 60 bucks on a game that I already have. A better level that they did using this theme was scaling the mountain size. And this theme includes the snow theme, the regular snow theme, no ice on the levels, no cave, overworld, snow. 
Now moving on to my favorite level within this world, and trust me, there are a lot of them. This was hard, hard decision, but it was Prickly Goombas. Almost tied with Icicle Caverns is again, Prickly Goombas. This level is the second ice theme level and they did a great job with it. The level all around was just a fun one and the star coins were a blast to get. Using elements like Prickly Goombas, Fire Piranha Plants, Fire Bros, and the Fire Flower, it envies me that this all isn't in Mario Maker 2. The reason why this level goes above Icicle Caverns is because you can skip the level if you really wanted to. Moving on to every analytical player's favorite world, Soda Jungle. I mean, I believe the world to be overrated. It isn't bad, but I mean, the level design for this world was strictly meant to fit in with every theme for every level. For example, spinning bridges over poison, giant wigglers over poison, the giants of the jungle, which is probably people's most memorable levels. However, I think that it was an overused theme throughout this world. However, when the levels took us out of the more predictable themes, I found this to be a very enjoyable world. However, for the life of me, I, I, I can't tell you with a straight face that I liked Bramble fucking Woods. Fuck that level. I mean, ever since 2008 on the Wii, I've just never liked Brambles. Having to either meticulously bounce on their heads to get rid of them or wait for them to cross the appearing blocks. I mean, you also don't know which ones are going to move fast and which ones are going to move slow. It's very easy to take damage from them given that most of them don't even begin their animation until you enter a certain range, which is always close. In conclusion, fuck Brambles, don't ever put them in the next Mario Odyssey, don't ever put them in the next NSBM, don't ever put them in the- Continue the video, I don't have all day. Okay, damn. Now, my favorite level in this world was Painted Swamplands. I mean, who could forget the Starry Night themed Painted Swamplands? The artwork was something never seen before in a Mario level. The layout of the pipes being over the poison also allowed you to speed run this course if you were good enough, <laughs> like me, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. or sit back and enjoy the background. I also loved how the normal flagpole got you nowhere and the secret way progressed you through the world. On my first run, I actually had to go back and complete these levels to get my fifth star. This is because I didn't go the normal ways and instead I just went the secret ways to progress. Okay, so let's move on to Rock Candy Mines. It's probably my least favorite and definitely the most extra world in the game. It's a damn puzzle to get around the map, requiring 200 IQ to get to certain levels. Many people question why this isn't a theme in Mario Maker 2, but I know why it isn't. It's because the melon theme isn't even its own theme. There's no clear theme for the world. It doesn't even have its own dedicated soundtrack. Although it's one of my least favorite worlds, I'd be lying to you if I said that there weren't any good or decent levels within it. But first, let's address my least favorite level. Fuzzy Clifftop. Dropping fuzzies onto tracks while writing Yoshi. Do I need to say anything else? The level design made the enemies scrutinizing. It also didn't help that it's a sky themed level. This means that I can fall to my death. So you sort of need Yoshi if you don't want to have a hard time. And since Yoshi's a bitch who can't take one hit without getting scared, this level's a recipe for disaster. My favorite level in this world, however, is Light Block's Dark Tower. You start off in a vertical dark cave, something I wish Mario Maker 2 had. But hey, the upside down cave theme is good enough on its own. A rift in reality, I love you, you're still my baby. You progress upwards through these big ass translucent light blocks. The fact that they are color changing also gives the dark level some aesthetic pleasure. Also, the yellow P-switch design which makes all the blocks turn on was a breath of fresh air. Moving on to World 7, Meringue Clouds. Like most sky themed worlds in New Super Mario Bros, they did a great job. It really takes a shit on the sky themed levels in the other worlds. It's like the world itself is saying, Mushroom Heights, we don't claim that ass. Now, I have two least favorite levels in this world, one of which being Spinning Spirit House. Maybe it's not the worst ghost house ever made, but it's definitely the most confusing, aside from fucking World 5's ghost house from the week. For the second star coin, drop into the first two gaps and go into the door on the left. Nigga, what? I mean, I like the idea that there are several doors which you must circulate and draw back to. However, the sections in between the doors were painful, 
With mediocre sections of spinning platforms and predictable fake doors, I mean, I had to rate this low. I also dislike slide lift tower. In fact, it might be worse. At least spinning spirit, whatever the fuck it's called, was versatile in a sense. But this level is by far the worst tower level. It makes you roll your eyes and take deep breaths while playing. Look at New Super Mario Bros. Wii's first World 7 Tower. It was a rising platform full of bullet bills. And you also controlled the platform. The next section were shooting bomb bombs at you. It was fun, difficult, and versatile. This level is just obnoxious, bland, and semi-difficult. Perhaps a different theme would have been better. Theme as in circulating platforms on tracks amongst fire bars and fire bros. And this level isn't bland, there's a lot to it. But the gameplay and level essence in itself is bland. You're waiting and avoiding fire bars, and you're actually having the platforms progress you through the level. There's not much that you are doing other than taking out fire bros. My favorite level in this world is Ludwig's Clockwork Castle. Now, I was gonna pick Switchback Hill as my favorite, but one, it's basically the sky themed version of scaling the mountainside. And I also liked some of the other levels, such as snaking above, a quick dip, and bouncing clouds, just as much as I did Switchback Hill. So I decided to go with Ludwig's Castle. It gives us a new theme in terms of a castle, no more giant skewers, lava, etc. Just a level which forces the player to be cognizant of their surroundings. And to get the coins, you must be extremely careful. There's a lot of deprecating coins, meaning if you miss your opportunity, they'll be gone. Also, the outdoor look of the level gives it more aesthetic pleasure. It feels like a more drawn out tower level, and Ludwig's boss fight is pretty enjoyable. Now moving on to Peach's Castle. It's the shortest world and it's not very drawn out. It reminds me of someone that just wrote a long ass essay. It is in the final stretch. So said person begins to rush through the essay so they'll be done with it. Usually, this will have a negative effect on the essay. However, while I'm using this essay as an analogy to Peach's Castle, I have to say that it isn't the case. Peach's Castle is surprisingly effective. The few levels that it does have captures the essence of the world, so I can't complain. Oh my gosh, you guys already know my least favorite level is Red Hot Elevator Ride. Please do not get me started on this level. This is probably the most painstaking, annoying, and ass-clenching levels in the game. You spend your time controlling a platform while dodging electrical currents and rising lava and bomb bombs. And if one thing, one thing touches your platform, then it will stop in its tracks. Like, don't even get me started. And the fucking lava begins to rise in the beginning section of the level where there's absolutely nothing like, can I get a Rocky Balboa mental prep before I have to run this marathon of a fucking level, please? Damn. Bro, should I tell them that I beat and got all three coins on the first try? Rising Tides of Lava. Firefall Cliffs was good and whatnot, but this level, this level takes the cake. The underground lava themes were always my favorite. I mean, this level takes advantage of the blue shells and the rising lava, giving you platforms. It can also be slow paced, but if you want the coins, you'll have to be on your feet. The background is also fucking dope. Superstar Road did a great job paying homage to each world throughout their levels. Unlike the Wii version, every level was themed in accordance to every world. For example, the third level was themed after the third world. The sixth level was themed after the sixth world, so on and so forth. It's also a good reward for those who collected every star coin. The levels, again, are properly themed and have a twist. That being said, my least favorite is, of course, Lakitu, Lakitu, Lakitu. I mean, the title is the reason why I don't like the level. Are, are, are we actually gonna, you, you know what? Let's roast Lakitu right here, right now. Yo, M dog, M dog, chill, chill. Save that for Rage Dog 5 and save it for another video. Let's continue. Pendulum Castle. Even though it was a bitch to complete, I enjoyed the extra level difficulty. This is objectively the hardest level in the game. And even though Nintendo went for level design over difficulty in this game, this level is a true mix of both. That was my list for my favorite and least favorite levels in each world in New Super Mario Bros. U. Do you agree? 
let me know in the comments down below. Make your own list in the comments below. Do whatever. I love you all. Catch you guys next time.